clap of praise in your home right there. Amen. Because God is so good. I tell you, the Lord is doing some great and mighty things. And if, you're, if you've got your Bible handy, I want you to turn into your Bible. It's going to be reading quite a few scriptures, and I'll tell you where they're found. And you can go uh, uh, turn your pages to that, and we'll have a great time in the Lord. But I feel like I have a message for somebody listening tonight as the Lord is going to speak to us through his word. In Job chapter 27, verse 21, it says, The east wind carrieth him away, and he departeth, and as a storm hurleth him out of his place. Then you turn to Psalm 107, verse 29. It says this. It says, He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. And then, when you read in Isaiah 25 and 4, if you want to write that down, For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength for the needy in their distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Then in Nahum chapter 1, verse 3, It says these words, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. And then if you'll turn to Mark chapter 4, right quick, and beginning with verse 35, Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships along the journey. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so as it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Verse 40 says, And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Verse 41, And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? And then finally, if you'll turn over to Matthew chapter 7, just a few verses there. Matthew 7, beginning with verse 24, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. I want to preach to you tonight called the blessing in the storm the blessing in the storm listen we're facing family storms we're facing relationship storms we're facing addiction storms marital sto- storms career storms all the and then now we're facing the uh, a pandemic sickness across our world today we're facing storms even tonight 
And as they begin to think about this, I know I don't have a pianist. I don't, know, I don't have an organist or anything like that. But who needs it when you're just preaching the Word of God, all right? But I have a song that I want to sing to you right now in this message because I, got the, I began to think about this message and this song, this chorus came across my mind. And I want you to know, I want you to know that the Lord is in control of this storm we're facing even tonight. I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. I know the peace speaker. He controls the winds and the rain. When he says peace, be still, they have to obey. I'm glad I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. I know the peace speaker. He controls the wind and the rain. When he says peace, be still. They have to obey. I'm glad I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. And his name is Jesus tonight. What are you going to do in your storm? When you begin to read in Mark 4, 35 and 40, 41, it begins to say that about the great story that we just read. Every person, every person that's watching tonight is in one of three places. Either you're in a storm now, or you're emerging from a storm in your life, or you're about to enter a storm. Storms are just as much a fact of life as are death and taxes. Can somebody say amen? Storms do not respect people of all races. Whether you're white, you're black, you're Hispanic, you're Indian, you're Laotian, you're rich, you're poor, you're saved, or you're lost. Storms befall on the rich and the poor, the young and the old. Storms are just simply a part of life for every single individual listening to me today. Listen, an American named Ken Barnes safely headed toward land after three days adrift. He said a driving storm off the tip of South America snapped his mask and rolled the yacht, shattering his dreams to make a non-stop round-the-world voyage. He said, I lost my boat, but I preserved my life. He explained how the 40-foot-long privateer was hit with winds between 40 to 50 miles an hour and waves of about 20 to 25 feet. He said, I was inside the boat. Had I been outside of the boat, I would have not been here today to tell you the story. He received injuries, yet he wanted to be the first American to go around the world in a solo, nonstop voyage from the West Coast. He explained that he knew the attempt would be dangerous. The United States Coast Guard received a distress signal from him on a Tuesday and was able to reach him on Friday, guided by rescue planes searching for him. Barnes wore a survival suit. He ate Pop-Tarts and granola bars while waiting to be rescued. He was very well equipped to handle such a loss as he experienced. And that's why he survived such a storm he had faced. Often we survive the storms, yet the injuries stay with us for a while. The storms of life 
frequently come without warning. A letter in the mail. A visit from a soldier to your door. A knock at your door from a policeman. A phone call. A severe look from a boss. A clearing of the throat followed by we need to talk. Storms can approach in velvet slippers with silent footfalls. Both, at, at, But in the end, when that happens, listen, when in the end, when those, all the storms are gone, the thunder may roar, the lightning is flashing, the winds begin to blow fiercely, hurricanes, bad health, trouble in the home, winds of sorrow, winds of fear, winds of doubt and worry blow across your home and your family in our world. Tornadoes of trouble, trouble, trouble. Everywhere you turn, trouble. Tornadoes of sickness, tornadoes of heartaches and pain, tornadoes of discouragement, tornadoes of adversities or a loss of a job, tornadoes of death, tornadoes of a bad doctor's report, and a, a, a fierce tornado of discouragement. Yet, in our story tonight, Jesus, think about this, Jesus has spent the day teaching. He had just gave concepts about farming to a crowd that had gathered. He mentions different types of ground to the crowd. He mentions the good. He mentions the wayside. He mentions the rocky ground. He mentions the thorny, thorny ground. Little did the disciples know that in just a very few, few hours, the types of ground would be revealed when they themselves would enter the storms of their life. His remarks were not that of literal farming, but rather spiritual farming. And he had been talking about the spiritual contents, listen, that exist within the heart of men. When Jesus concluded the Sermon on the Mount, he mentions two men who had the same material but had different foundations. When the storms came, the, the fool's house was washed away, but the wise man's house was left standing. Storms temper or mold the character and shape the heart of every single individual listening to me tonight. The Lord had great ability to take things that are inanimate and lifeless to use them for something for the glory of God. You see, God used mud to heal a blind man's eyes. He used a water pot to pour out new wine. He used a water bucket to tell a woman about everlasting life. One day, he allowed the ground to become a chalkboard to relieve a woman of her accusers and her sin as he bent down and wrote in the sand. Yet, on this day, on this day, he used a boat and it became a pulpit. He had taught from the helm of the boat to a large crowd and a vast crowd that had gathered. Other boats had anchored near to hear the Lord's words. It was approaching nighttime. Crickets were starting to chirp, beginning to cool down from the heat of the day. The dusk was coming. The Lord was suggesting that the disciples start their trek for the distant shore. And they did. And while on this journey, they found themselves suddenly in a storm. A man 
or woman in a storm and his or her reactions in the time of crisis will show where his or her faith really lies. Listen, the disciples knew the dangers of a storm. They just didn't know when the storm would come. On this night, on this particular night, the storm and the surrounding dangers were to be their greatest teacher. They start on their journey a little way across and thinking and thinking about an hour to an hour and a half, they would be comfortably ashore on the other side. But then while they just coasted alone, then suddenly the storm sets in on them with the fury of a wild animal. They are stunned with the suddenness, suddenness of its appearance out of it nowhere. Quickly, the sails are lowered. The oars are brought out and the experienced fishermen are the leaders. Listen, keep the boat into facing the wind. Keep the oars in the water. Pull, let's pull together. Keep a steady hand on the rudder. The storm is getting more and more boisterous. That was what they knew to do. But sometimes there are powerful tumultuous storms that are beyond our control. The storm we're facing like today is beyond our control, so to speak. What the disciples did mirrors what we do when storms settle in on us. Remember this, church. Remember this. Somewhere between ordinary and exceptional, there's something called trouble. Skilled marin mariners are not made on seas of glass, but rather in the teeth of a storm. A storm can develop you if you would just trust Him in the storm. Be faithful to Him in the storm. Obey His voice in the storm. Somewhere between average and mediocrity and greatness in your life, is a storm. Days will be filled with gut-wrenching storms. Days will be filled with nerve-twisting storms of life. Days filled with sleep-stealing storms in your life. Tossing and turning, seeking for answers. What are we going to do? Which way are we going to turn? Days will be filled with questioning God. Why this? Why this, O oh God? Why is this happening to us? Days will be filled with discouragement that you don't seem that you could carry on another day. Days will be filled with heartbreak and sadness and pain. And we begin to question God and wonder, where are you, God? But the fact is, church, listen to me. The fact is that God is in the storm. Listen, in the storm, God is developing us. The storm, in the midst of the storm, God is growing us in our spiritual man and woman. The, in, in the midst of the storm, God is molding us into what we need to be in these hours that we're facing today. In the midst of the storm, God is preparing you for what He wants you to become for him to serve him today. Think about it. In the midst of the storm, could it be that today this incredible storm that we're facing all races of people, all the countries of the world. The Listen, the Lord knows what's going on. And just maybe, just maybe during this time of crisis, the Lord is developing you into the soldier of Christ He wants you to be. The Lord is growing you that you can be the light to this dark world. They want to turn to something we can give 
give them the answer. His name is Jesus Christ. The Lord is molding the church in what the church should be. The, he's, mo- he's preparing the church for the greatest days of head for revival. I pray that through this storm we're facing, could you just imagine every pew in the sanctuary, every seat on this platform, Maybe people sitting on the floor trying to listen to the precious word of God. Let the storms of life make us to what we need to be in this world today. Listen, the church is to be the bride he wants and he's getting the bride ready. Hallelujah. This is true of all occupations and professions, but particularly true in the spiritual realm. There are no shortcuts in life, church. If the storm is going to develop you, there are things you must learn as you go through the storm. Listen, number one, I want you to know, a storm will give you opportunity to grow. Listen, the disciples who were fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James, John were very skilled at handling storms. But when the storm first came, I'm sure they began to go through the protocol of the storm. Let the sails down. Keep the oars in the water. Keep a firm hand on the rudder. Keep the water out of the boat. Pick up the buckets and start bailing the water out of the boat. Sometimes people feel pretty good about what they have to rely on. Maybe sometimes in our world we rely just simply on a good job or just having a good home or good insurance plan or a good bank account or a good savings account a good stocks and bonds or if I get in trouble I will I'll just take care of it myself I'm telling you we're coming to a day church that only by the grace of an almighty God will he help us to make it in these crucial days ahead but there come a time when you have to walk You have to walk the steps of Moses. You see, the bramble isn't much until God sets it on fire. The stick is just an ordinary thing, but when God gets a hold of it, it can be changed into a snake. It is just a hand until God clothes it with leprosy and then cleanses it. What most of us don't realize is that that we would be willing to offer our common things to God. He would take it and use it for the kingdom of God. He would do extra extraordinary things with just common materials. I'm here to tell you, God is in control of the storm. A curious thing happens to apple trees in the great northwest. Over time, these trees will put more bark on than fruit. To remedy this particular malady, orchid workers will severely prune back the apple trees. The apple tree somehow senses that its existence is in jeopardy. It will begin to bear fruit in abundant supply. Suffering and storms cause us to grow. Left to our own devices, we will always develop more bark than fruit. But listen, that is one of the the purposes of the storm to cause you to quit relying on me, on mine, on my stuff, on my things, on my talents, my abilities. God simply needs us to give it to him. Listen, some of the first things, some, so one of the first things to learn in the storm is that storms give us an opportunity to grow spiritually. Listen, Lord, help us to allow the storms of life that we face make us better and not bitter. Listen, the storm will draw us towards another world. Hallelujah. Listen, think about it. Thirteen men in the boat. One was asleep. Four others were accomplished sailors. The other eight are sitting back watching it all happen. They probably are not real worried because the four fishermen do not appear to be too worried. 
Peter and the boys will get us out of this jam. I have faith that they can get us out of this storm. They know what they're doing. I have faith that they have been here before and they can see the other side. Sometimes, sadly, we treat the church like that. If the pastor's all right, if everything is comfortable, if all the other things are running smoothly, there's no real need for me to get involved. The strong saints are praying, somebody's fasting, and we have just enough of the Spirit to keep us from being just like the church down the street. What is needed is a storm that rattles every single person person in every single church in this world listen to me listen to me I have to tell you we have to understand you see the skilled sailors starting to get nervous then you start getting a little queasy when everything around you is stripped away think about it it could be the very best thing that's ever happened to us and to the church world listen to me Jacob had the birthright but it looked murderous it took a murderous brother to motivate him to use it Joseph had some tremendous dreams but it took a band of brutal brothers to put him on the path to greatness Hannah had to deal with the insults but it sent her alone to the temple Moses had to be sent to the backside of the desert for 40 years so God could prepare him Nehemiah needed to build a wall but it was the opposition of Tobiah and Sanballat that motivated him the most David had to be sent to the pasture for God to teach him there comes a point in the storms of life when you have to live off of your faith church instead of daddy's faith or mama's faith or your brother's faith or the pastor's faith or somebody else's faith it is usually the storm that makes us each gain a measure of our own faith to know and to trust God he will take us through the storm suffering keeps this world from becoming too attractive to us and causes us to look forward to toward a master that will lead us to our future home called heaven. Some of the greatest spirituals ever sang were pinned in the strange distant land called suffering. The remedies that we need are not earth bound but rather they are heaven bound. Listen to me church. It is what happens after all and after all or in the adversity that counts. One man has said that it is not so much what happens to us, but rather what happens in us during the trouble, during the trial, during the times of storms. Listen, storms will give you an opportunity to grow. Storms will draw you to another world. It'll point your head toward heaven. Also, the storm will bring you to your knees. Listen, I'm telling you, there came some point in the battle, in the storm, that the sailors figured out that their own skills could not save them. Their resources could not save them. The only thing that could save them then was the master. Many people want the great calm without the storm. But the great calm cannot be fully appreciated until the storm has torn us apart. Listen to me. I want an anointing, but I want no storms. I want a great prayer life, but I don't want the storms. I want a great spiritual life, but I don't want the storms. I want to know what the book says, but I don't want the storms. I want to win souls to the kingdom, but I don't want the storms. I want to serve the Lord with all of my heart, but I don't want the storms. I want to grow in God and know His Word, but I don't 
don't want the storm. I want to get closer to God, but I don't want the storms. Listen, this sometimes is the prevailing pattern of life in where there are great successes, that there are also great affliction. Pentecost is followed by persecution. Peter's sermon was followed by imprisonment. A life flourishes and is followed by the stern adversities and setbacks of life. The disciples experienced the greatest calm and it was followed with an overwhelming tempest. If you want the sun to stand still, then you've got to be in the fight. If you want the water to be sweet that you drink, you have to taste the bitter water first. If you want manna from heaven, you have to get hungry for it. Listen to me now. If you want the fire to fall from heaven, you have to be surrounded by doubt and unbelief. If you want the birds to feed you, then you have to be on the run from a mad queen. If you want the axe head to float in the water, it has to be lost in the pond. Listen, there is an account of a miracle given in 2 Kings chapter 7. A hopeless situation Situation is told of the city of Samaria is under attack. Not only that, but one of the most fear, fearful famines ever in the history of Israel has the people by their throat. Hunger and fear have choked their faith. Elisha the prophet gets up and says that God is going to supply an abundance of food. Some people sneered. Some people made spite and their doubt and they doubted God would not allow them to have that but yet God would not allow their doubt to stop the mercy from being granted how it was discovered was a whole different affair there were four out cast weary roaming lepers who walked into the camp of the Hittites who had fled the previous night in a panic because God had ran them out of the camp but consider this if the lepers had not been lepers they would not have been in the city if the lepers had not been the outcast of the city they would not have gotten the treasure if the lepers had not been roaming in the wilderness they would not have found the treasure let your storm bring you to your knees it is in that crucial place of prayer that God is so willing to do so much for his people listen to me Erwin Lutzer said God often puts in us situations that are too much for us that we will learn that no situation is too much for him. I'm thankful that God is going to get us through the storm. Storms will give you an opportunity to grow. Storms will draw you to another world. Storms will bring you to your knees and that's the place we need to be. The storm can bring glory to an almighty God. It was the storm that brought the disciples in the boat the first time. They weren't too concerned what who was doing what. Just make sure that we survive this storm. Storms can make us draw closer to those around us who are enduring a trial. That was one of the chief themes of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We comfort the hurting with the same comfort we found in the midst of our own heart. Listen, I know that tonight you may be watching and you're struggling with what's going on. I know that there's some people that you're sitting in your living room maybe watching this but you may be watching the television news and you see trouble trouble, trouble. I know that some people are having financial problems right now. I know that there's some people that's having job problems right now. I know that even some people are having marital problems during this trial. 
I know that some people doubt what God has called them to do. I know that there's some people that are unable to forgive themselves even though God already has. I know that there's some people that's having trouble with your kids. You're having health problems. You're struggling with depression, with fear and doubt. I know that there's some people that's having family problems. Yet, listen to me, in all the storms, glory can be brought to God. Listen, there is nothing you can do about it in this storm we're facing today. Storms will just keep coming. Some days the sun shines. Some days the rains fall. Some days it's cloudy. Sometimes I'm up. Sometimes I'm down. Sometimes my faith is leveled to the ground. Storms are going to come and storms are going to go. Listen, we will face physical storms, emotional storms, economic storms, spiritual storms. Yet remember, let me proclaim it. God is speaking to us through the storms of our life. We may not like it, but thank God He has the answer. God may send rain, but He'll also bring the sunshine. God may send a cold winter snow, but He'll also bring the springtime. God may send a boisterous wind, but He'll also bring the calm after the storm. Noah knew what storms was about. Jonah knew what storms was about. Job knew about storms. Survival, listen to me, survival is not in the boat or the cargo or your power. Our answer is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Can somebody shout amen? In the year of 1871, listen to me now, 1871, tragedy struck the city of Chicago in the form of a devastating fire. 300 people died and 100,000 were left homeless. Horatio Gates Spafford was one of those who tried to help the people of the city to get back on their feet. Spafford was once an attorney who had invested much of his money into downtown Chicago real estate. He lost a great deal in the fire, but he was motivated to help the homeless and the grief-stricken. After two years of grueling work, Spafford and his wife Anna and their four daughters were due a vacation. They decided to go to England. Listen to me now. And when they traveled, so they decided to go to England and travel throughout Europe. Spafford would stay behind in Chicago, and he would catch up with his family on the other side of the Atlantic later on. But you see, their ship never made it. Off the coast of Newfoundland, it collided with another ship and sank within 20 minutes. Anna was able to cling to a floating piece of the wreckage. But her four daughters all drowned. Later, Spafford received a horrible telegram with only two chilling words. Saved alone. He boarded the next available ship to see his grieving wife. Though reports vary when he did so, at some point, near where his daughter's lives were lost. He could just imagine it, the pain of Spafford's overwhelming grief as he stood on the side of that ship in the area where he lost most of his family. But he, at that point, the golden words to a now famous hymn that we've all sang all across this world, he wrote, When peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say It is well, it is well with 
my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Can you just imagine? The storms will come. In the midst of the storms, there is a Savior who will let His peace prevail over you. Maybe you're facing a storm of sickness and pain. You're discouraged about what's happening in our world today. You've got so much trouble. Questions and answers are not there. Even the questions aren't there. I don't even know how to ask it. Heartache. Decisions that must be made. Difficult decisions. Kids, the job, the family. Let me tell you something. God will protect the church. I was watching the news the other night and I began to watch about the tornadoes that had been hitting Arkansas. And I began to think about the, the news gave a report and interviewed this, this man and his family that, was, that survived. And they wondered how they survived. And he took them to the place. It was total damage everywhere. The house was completely destroyed except a closet. The closet, that's where they ran and hid and sat in the closet. Around them, the entire house was destroyed. Listen to me. I'm here to tell you, that God is going to put a hedge around the church during this difficult days of time that we're living in. He's going to give us a hedge of protection to know that God is in control of everything. Let us do. Let us work. Let us serve. Let us pray. Let us help. Let us help one another. Lift one another up. Because Jesus is still the answer for the world today. Thank you for watching. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for your word and your promises are true. I just ask your Holy Spirit, Lord, to all those that's watching right now, or maybe even watch later, that you will strengthen them, you will help them, whatever the areas are in their life that they're facing right now, with all heartache and worry and pain and fear of tomorrow, Lord, you're able to come into our lives and calm us in the greatest storm that we've ever faced in America today. Help us in Jesus' precious name. Amen.